This is a Project 399 Super G Plus. Long range quad with seven inch props, long arms, and a dead cat layout as you can see here. We're gonna start off with the specs and the stuff that you guys that know what this is want to know. And then, what's going on? try and make this video to cater to both you guys that know what this is about you guys that follow my channel but also the newbies that want to learn more about this hobby what I'm gonna do is gonna start off with the specs first for what you guys that know what FPV is want to know and then we'll get into a little bit more detail and some general terms so you guys that are experts might get a little bit bored but I Hope you stick around. Let's start with the basics. This is a long range quad. It's uh, designed by Jet FPV. Uh, that's uh, Jordan Temkin, who was in DRL and he basically runs this small company that makes these frames. Project 399, he's an expert in long range and mountain surfing, that kind of thing. And this is what this is designed for. This guy I built here specifically for 5S batteries. I used Zing. 2208-2150 kV motors from iFlights. 2150 kV is a kV that's very much catered for 5S, although some guys spin 6S on them, but it's basically very, very much in the middle there for 5S batteries. Right now, I have a China Hobbyline 1800 5S on it, but this should be able to fit up to a 2200, such as the Pyro 2200, so you can get more flight time. There's enough space in the back there to, to, to have the bigger battery. Uh, there's a couple of things that I did differently that compared to some of the other guys. I decided to go with individual ESCs simply because I feel it's easier to control noise and to tune when you have individual ESCs than when you have a 4-in-1, even though you lose the convenience factor, it's harder to build, and also weighs a little bit more. In this case, I went with a Lumineer Lux F7 flight controller, going to a Matek PDB. Some of you guys know that the Lux F7 is actually made by Matek. It uses the same target on Betaflight, which is uh, F722SE target. And the ESCs are from Airbot, they are Airbot, Ferling 32 Mini. As you can see, they are only as wide as the arms, which is about 12 to 14 millimeters wide, and they fit in there perfectly. That's pretty impressive for a ESC that does up to 6S. I specifically went with this ESC because of that. I didn't want big overhang on the arms. I wanted to keep the low profile that a 4-in-1 gives you, but with individual ESCs, and I capped each, each of the ESCs with a 330, 35 volt cap. And finally, there is another cap in there, which is a 560, 35 volt on the PDB itself. So in total, it has five caps. The idea was to keep noise at a minimum because as you, a lot of you guys know, seven inch quads and six inch quads for that matter are harder to tune. The bigger the prop, the harder to tune. And a couple other features we need to look at here. It has a TBS Unify, not Unify, a TBS um, CRSF Crossfire nano diversity which is the new receiver that has two dual that has two antennas so it's diversity and has one in this axis and one in the vertical axis the idea is that no matter in what position the quad is in it always has some kind of orientation towards the antenna for long range you kind of want the antenna to be vertical the one on the radio and this one is the one that's normally going to be getting the best signal but if you ever sideways or in a certain other position or doing a roll or whatever you can get another access to that antenna so that you um, don't fail safe. Um, the position of the antennas up forward is kind of important. Uh, this one's very high, but I like antennas in the front. And the main reason for that is because when you're flying away from you, 
An antenna in the back is absolutely fine if you had the radio antenna here. But as soon as you turn around and you're flying towards you and you're high, the battery often blocks the antenna. So having antennas at the front usually means that you always have some kind of line of sight to your radio. Another feature here I, uh, is I added the, this um, Lumineer Axi left hand, which is what I usually prefer for long range. And it, it's very high, so it stays kind of away from the body so that if you're in different positions where you're flying or your battery or your camera doesn't block the antenna so you get a clear signal anywhere you are. I have a GPS, a Matek GPS with compass at the back in this custom tray that was made for me by BMC 3D, Brent Collier. He printed that one and he also printed the three, the GoPro mount at the front. I went with a TBS Unify Pro 800 milliwatt HV. I didn't go with the ESC uh, 1000 milliwatt. I didn't go with the Racing Quads Mach 3. I feel 800 milliwatt is a lot. You can go very far with that. You don't necessarily need a thousand milliwatts. Uh, I have a beeper back here, but eventually I'll also have uh, something like a Hellgate buzzer for when I'm actually flying really far so that if I go down, I can find it. I decided to go with a full-size camera. And the main reason is because I used a Swift 2. Not only did I have a couple lying around, but I like that it has a microphone. I didn't have any other microphone in the build, so I, when I'm far, I like to have a microphone. Sometimes, where, let's say when you're about three quarters of a mile to a mile, but you still hear the quad, and you do a flip or a roll or whatever, you hear that extra throttle, and it comes back really delayed because of the distance. I find that really weird. I really like to hear it immediately. So when I'm flying far, I, I like to have audio when possible. It just keeps me engaged, even though the quad is a mile away. Like I said, it's made for long distance. Uh, a small five inch quad can easily w do one or two miles. Uh, this is meant to stay up in the air longer. See, for example, a powerful five inch quad will do three to four minutes. In the air, this should be able to do seven to 10 minutes, depending on the battery and depending on how, how hard you are on the throttle, how you can throw it, how you control it. Um, what else am I missing here? It's gonna be running uh, GoPro Hero 7. I am gonna tune it initially without Hypersmooth. I am very critical of my tunes, so I want it to be perfect and I don't want Hypersmooth to be a mask. I'm only gonna add it once it's actually tuned the way I want it, and then I'll add Hypersmooth. The mount here by uh, BMC 3D is adjustable. Right now it's at 30 to 35 degrees, but down here you can adjust it down to 20 degrees and even up to 40 I believe. And the camera then just slips right in. This one's slightly modified. The one that you find on Brent's site on BMC 3D has a protector around it. But I wanted to run this ND filter bumper holder here from Brain 3D. And the reason for that is because I always like to fly with an ND filter. For you guys that do not know about this, uh, we normally fly in very bright conditions. And what happens is that um, the, like any camera, the, sh the aperture and the shutter speed have to adjust to the bright light. In this case, the shutter speed, if, if it's too bright, the shutter speed goes very fast in order to absorb the least amount of light possible. That creates a flip book effect, it creates a, a movie that looks staggered and it also causes more vibrations. You can see jello sometimes in the picture and it doesn't look good. So by doing an ND filter to darken the image, you're basically letting less light in, which lets the camera make a slower shutter speed, which kind of like fuses the clips together, causes a little bit of blend and makes for smoother footage and also helps eliminate jello and all the vibrations in your footage. Anything else I'm missing here? Let's see. Uh, I was very critical about the, the XT60, how I wanted it in the back, so it's out of the way, as you can see here. And um, I've soft mounted the motors as I usually do. I know a lot of guys don't do this anymore, but I still do. I put TPU at the bottom for the bolt heads, and then there is uh, rub. actually this is silicone at the top. I got these from Banggood. And that is about it. Um, for you guys that are new to this, 
I still want to cater to you. I, I, a lot of the stuff I just said is very technical, but basically this long range quad is very different than the DJI drones that you're normally used to. This uh, is more manual. It can fly technically further. Um, you have to build it yourself. It runs a uh, video on 5.8 gigahertz and it runs the radio signal on nine, 900 megahertz, which is a lower, bigger wave than the 2.4 that most RC crafts today fly. Uh, 900 megahertz allows you to go farther. It's a bigger wave, so it tends to cut through stuff a lot better. And um, yeah, it uses a LiPo battery. 5S as in 5 cells, which is around 20.5 to 21 volts around there. I, I would have to do the math. And yeah, it could fly easily between 2 to 4 miles or more if the conditions are perfect for it. Uh, the camera here feeds image to your goggles, which you guys have seen before. And then you have your radio control that, that goes and controls the craft. Alright guys, if you have any questions, Feel free to write them in the comments, share this video with your friends, make sure to keep it saved for reference if you're building one of these. And like I said, any questions, feel free to ask. I try to answer all of them as much as I can. Be sure to please subscribe to the channel. Look me up on Instagram, Pinchtune. Uh, I post a lot of Instagram. There's a lot of chatter there around my builds and my flying. And yeah, make sure to subscribe. It really helps out. See you later. Before I forget, um, I don't have flight footage yet. I just finished building it. I'll have flight footage soon. So be sure to check the video description for links. As soon as I have video, uh, video footage of it actually flying, I'll put it down there so you can find it. So I'll have follow-up videos for it for sure. So yeah, subscribe so you can see the follow-up videos for this.